that we have had at the Lipton. Fourth straight year, an American will win. And the third All-American final on the ATP Tour this year. In 1985, Tim Mayotte beat Scott Davis. Both of them were from the USA. And then two years ago, Jim Courier, before he made his major move in the tennis world, beat David Wheaton of the USA. Michael Chang won it last year, but he beat Alberto Mancini of Argentina in the final. So that won by an American, but it wasn't an old USA final. Andre Agassi has won this tournament as well. Ivan Lendl, when he was a Czech citizen, he's now a US citizen, won it in 89. If you give him the benefit of the doubt, then this will be five in a row for the USA. And continuing a 68-year tradition of overhead appearances at major sporting events with us today, the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. Still haven't gotten my ride. <laughs> You're not going to get it from me. <laughs> it's always nice to have a good overhead around the tennis court, too. Oh. <laughs> Fifteen all here. Sampras just served his six ace, compared to three from Olivia Washington. <laughs> Good change up. Washington was looking for the cross court forehand. Sampras has gone there a couple of times. Take another look at his point. Sets it up well. Again, he likes to hit the forehand from the backhand side. He got a little help from the net cord. But just froze Washington at the net, held on to it just a little bit. Watch him hold just for the split second, freeze Washington at the net right there. He tends to hit his forehand a little on the late side anyway. Throw up a good topspin lob. 30-15. Well, at least I do, that if, not, if, if Washington could just hang in there and really try to keep Sampras on the baseline, keep him moving around, that there's just that chance his shin is just not going to hold up. He's he's really limping around and trying to take his time in the in between points. I don't see it, Betsy. Two breaks down, you know, if it was one break, I'd say that you're dead right. But, mm -hmm. you know, Sampras can turn on the serve, uh, I mean, you know, and, and, and that's just about all he needs. We'll see. Where do you Fault. The problem is, as you said, Cliff, he's just got such explosive yeah, weapons that he, he can turn them on at, at will. That's Malavia's problem. Yeah. Well, if uh, things hold true to form, the next point from Sampras should be a good one. Malavia Washington's had so many chances. This is his eighth chance to break in the match. Four in the first set. This is his fourth break point in this set. But Sampras has not lost a service game yet in the match. Not good news for Washington. See? I <laughs> mean, <laughs> just throws him a big boomer. Let's take a look at his shin after the serve. A little bounce there. Definitely not 100%. He's <laughs> feeling it. He is trying to catch Jim Courier as the number one player in the world. He wants to close that gap. He has been within one match. You know, if he'd won the U.S. Open final, he would have been the number one player in the world. See, 280 points to the winner of this title. And, of course, Courier lost earlier. So. Sampras has the game. It's going to put him at 5-1 in the second set. Clip, if you were coaching Pete Sampras, what would be your call on how to 
Get him number one? Yes. Well, he has all the attributes. I mean, I think he is, a, as I've said before, I think he's the most talented player in the sport. The only thing that I'd tell him to do is never have that hangdog look. I'd, I'd, I would try to change his uh, body language on the court, and I'd also try to have him think more positively about himself. I always said that if he just knew how good he was, he'd be number one in a minute. But technically, he's perfect as far as I'm concerned. He has won the U.S. Open, of course, in that big surprise three years ago. It's the only Grand Slam tournament that he's won. But he had a very good Grand Slam year last year. 15 love here, second set. He did not play uh, the Australian last year, but he got to the quarters of the French semis at Wimbledon, final of the U.S. Open. Lost to Stefan Edberg in that final in a very dramatic match. He had a chance to take a two-set to one lead. In fact, he, he was on a 16-match winning streak coming into that U.S. Open and beaten Edberg in the final of an event just prior to the U.S. Open. Edberg was able to defend his title in Washington trying to be aggressive at this stage and, and makes a stab volley and uh, he's just so good up there very few balls get by him look at this stretch and this reach he caught at the end of the racket was able to control it into the court regains his balance wins the point nine times out of ten with Sampras the opportunity to make that passing shot he would have done it but <laughs> but Washington was on that one season Pete Sampras finished with the best match record on tour had 70 wins only 18 losses 40 15 here and Malavia Washington has held serve Pete Sampras leads 5-2 in the second set we will be back with more from the Lipton after this Welcome back to the Lipton Championships here in Key Biscayne. Pete Sampras is serving for the match here. He leads 5-2, second set. Saw that graphic a moment ago. Sampras has such a good record last year, 1992, and he is trying to catch Jim Courier, the number one player in the world. That's what they're playing for here, of course, the winner and the runner-up Crystal Trophy. He is widening the gap with Stefan Edberg, which is good news for the both of them, of course. But Curry has had just a very, very good year. He won the Australian, of course. In fact, he's only lost two matches all year. He won the Newsweek, which was the last major on the IBM ATP Tour. He also won in Memphis. 